What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to go through the 2018 Calc BC free response question number six. So let's get started. For part A, we're writing the first four non-zero terms and general term of the McLaurin series for f of x, and f of x is given here. So this is one of those questions where we're starting off with the power series, and we have to use this one to build a power series, or in this case, a McLaurin series for f of x. So the first thing we could do is we're going to take natural log of 1 plus x, and we're going to replace the x with x over 3. So instead of 1 plus x, we're looking at x over 3. And now we could go ahead and expand this. So this is going to be very algebra heavy. So that first x we're replacing with x over 3. And then we're going to do the same for the other x's, but just making sure our algebra is accurate. So we have x over 3 squared divided by 2. And then we're going to have plus x over 3 to the third divided by 3. And then that's three terms, but we need a fourth non-zero term. So we have minus x over 3 to the fourth and then divided by 4. And now the general term, we could just do the same algebra. So we have plus dot, dot, dot. And we're looking at negative 1 to the m plus 1. But instead of x to the n, we're replacing that x with x over 3 and raising all of this to the n power. And then this is divided by n. And then plus and then dot, dot, dot. This will just keep going on forever. So the next line here, what we need to do is to build f of x, we need to multiply everything here by x. So the next step here would be to take this entire equation that we have and multiply everything by x. And then this tells us the McLaurin series for f of x equals, well, I just think we're doing x times x over 3. So that's going to make x squared over 3. And now this, we're going to do the algebra all in one step, but we have minus. This will make x to the second over 3 squared. So when I do x times x to the second, that's going to make x to the third. And then the 3 squared, we're going to write in the denominator next to the times 2 here. Okay, we don't actually have to simplify this. This is just to help us see the pattern. And then we have plus, we have x to the third power, but we're multiplying everything by x. So x to the third times x is going to give us x to the fourth. And now the 3 to the third power we write in the denominator and then write our times 3 next to it. And then the last non-zero term that we're writing before the general term, we have x to the fourth times the x is going to make minus, we have x to the fifth over 3 to the fourth power, and then multiplying by 4. So now we're just going to do this algebra for the, and we'll just combine this here. So we have plus, we're going to do the algebra for the x to the n term. So this we would have x to the n, but when we multiply by x, it's going to make x to the m plus 1, and then divided by 3 to the n power, and then we have times n. Okay, and then this will continue on forever. So this will complete part A. We have the first four non-zero terms, and here's the general term for our McLaurin series. Part B is worth 5 points, and we want to find the interval of convergence for the McLaurin series of f of x from part A, and we have to show a lot of work for this. So the series from part A, if we condense it into series form, could be expressed by this here. So this was our general term, and we're just going from n equals 1 to infinity. And what we want to do here is we want to use the ratio test. So we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity, and be mindful this is our a sub n term. So what we're going to do is we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity of, and we've got the absolute value of our a sub n plus 1 term. And to find the a sub n plus 1 term, you just replace every n with n plus 1. So here we'd have n plus 1 plus 1, which would make n plus 2. And then we'd have x to the, instead of n plus 1, we have n plus 1 plus 1, which is also n plus 2. And then in the denominator, we're going to have 3 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1. Okay, so this once again represents our a sub n plus 1 term. And what we're going to do is we're going to divide by a sub n. But when we divide by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we're going to have times 3 to the n times n over, and then we have negative 1 to the n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1. Okay, so just setting this up here is going to get us some credit for the question. But now to get more credit, we have to simplify and then go through the rest. So what we're looking for here is to do a little bit of algebra. x to the n plus 2 over x to the n plus 1 this one's going to cancel out completely, and m plus 2 is exactly 1 more than m plus 1, so we'll be left with the x to the first. And same logic with 3 to the n versus 3 to the n plus 1. 3 to the n cancels completely, and this will leave us with 3 to the first on bottom. And also, negative 1 to the m plus 1 could go away completely, and m plus 2 will just replace with an exponent of 1, because once again, m plus 2 is exactly 1 more than m plus 1. So we just have to be 
skilled with the algebra. Sometimes the algebra could be a little annoying for these questions, but you just have to go very carefully. So we have the limit now as n goes to infinity, and we just write the leftovers, and some things can exit the absolute value. Well, for one, the absolute value of negative 1 is just 1, so we could just ignore this piece. The absolute value of x to the first needs to stay in absolute value because x could be positive or negative. But when we take the absolute value of positive 3, that's just going to be 3, so that could exit the absolute value. And also, we're left with n over n plus 1. Those two can also exit the absolute value because n is going to positive infinity. So we could say goodbye to the absolute value for the n terms. And now we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity, which means the limit as n goes to infinity is going to affect this piece. So this is going to be equal to the absolute value of x over 3, and the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1 is equal to 1. So we could write times 1 here, or we could just leave this as absolute value of x over 3. And now the ratio test will only show convergence when the limit itself works out to something less than 1. So that brings us to this step, which implies that the absolute value of x, if we multiply both sides by 3, has to be less than 3. And this gives us a preliminary interval of convergence. We could get rid of the absolute value of x with this less than 3 if we write negative 3 is less than x, which is less than positive 3. Now for the last two out of five points for part b, we're going to have to investigate the endpoints. So we're going to plug in x equals negative 3 to our series from part a. And we're going to have the series from n equals 1 to infinity of. And we've got negative 1 to the n plus 1. And instead of x to the n plus 1, we're going to have negative 3 to the n plus 1 like this. And we're dividing by 3 to the n times n. So there's a few ways we could go forward with this. But the algebra I want to do here is when we have something like a to the c times b to the c, that's the same thing as a times b to the c like this. So this series we could rewrite. And we're going to have, see, and see we have matching exponents. We have n plus 1, n plus 1. So we're going to do negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3 to the n plus 1. So we could do this on top. And then we have 3 to the n times n on bottom. So this is going to simplify to notice 3 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n is just 3 to the first on top. And this series, if we look, is a divergent series. Okay, this series we could say diverges. And the reason why it diverges is that it's the constant 3 times the harmonic series 1 over n. For these questions where we have to check the endpoints, they know that it's very tedious to do questions like this. So you could just write these shorthand explanations and this will get you full credit. So now we're going to check the other endpoint at x equals 3. So we're going to plug in x equals 3 here. And this is going to give us the series from n equals 1 to infinity. And we've got negative 1 to the n plus 1. Except this time we're going to have 3 to the n plus 1. And we're over 3 to the n times n. So this one we could do the algebra a little bit different. So this time around, instead of uh, doing what we did up here, I'm going to rewrite 3 to the n plus 1 as 3 to the n times 3 to the first. And notice here, when we do that, 3 to the n over 3 to the n is going to cancel completely. And then this is going to give us, we have this series here, the series from n equals 1 to infinity, and we've got negative 1 to the n plus 1 times 3 over n. And this series, it may resemble a harmonic series, except this time around at x equals 3, we have, an, we have an alternating harmonic series being multiplied by 3. So this, we would be able to use the alternating series test to say that this series converges. And remember, just to brush up on the alternating series test, the general term 3 over n is decreasing, and the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 over n is equal to 0. And this is an alternating series. So we could apply the alternating series test to show that this series converges. So now we have enough information here to write our actual interval. So notice our interval of convergence. We could just write this out now. The interval does go from negative 3 to positive 3. However, we diverged at x equals negative 3. So we could put a parenthesis. And the series converged at x equals positive 3. So we could write our answer like this. Now for the last part of this question, we're going to use the work from part A. And we have p sub 4 of x is a fourth degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals 0. And this is what we actually need to do. We're going to use the alternating series error bound to find an upper bound for p sub 4 of 2 minus f of 2. So this one here, we just really need to know the formula. So we have p sub 4 of 2. And then minus, we have f of 2. 
and then less than or equal to. So we need to find an error bound using the alternating series error bound. So this here just, you know, represents the error because this is an approximation and f of 2 is the actual value. So here, the trick to these kind of questions is that the degree of the polynomial is degree 4, which means that p sub 4 of x would just be these three terms together. But now, the goal here is to find the error bound used to approximate the function at 2 using this fourth degree Taylor polynomial. So the way the formula works is we use the first unused term. So since we stopped at degree 4, our error bound is going to come from the first unused term, which is the fifth power term. And we're also evaluating this at x equals 2. So now we're just going to say this is equal to 2 to the 5th power over 3 to the 4th times 4. So now we just have to simplify here. This is going to be equal to 2 to the 5th power is 32. So we have 32 over, and then 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, hope I said that enough times, is equal to 81 times 4. But just know, let's say you're terrible at addition and uh, and multiplication and division and all that stuff. You could just stop here, but whatever, we'll just simplify this. Then we have 32 over 4 could simplify to 8, since 32 divided by 4 is 8. So our error bound, we could just say, is 8 over 81. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on the 2018 free response question number 6. Thanks for sticking it out to the end, and good luck on your AP test.